What's up guys and welcome back to the shop. Today what we're going to do is install these T-Rex upper engine guards and there's two main things and reasons why I'm not really taking this thing off road yet and for one is I don't have good crash protection on the side and then the other reason is I want soft panniers so that when this bike hits the ground it might soak up some of that damage and of course this drain plug that we didn't switch during the oil change that kind of sucks hopefully I will I mean, we're, we're running through miles through this thing pretty fast, so I've been driving it every single day. It's way too damn cold to ride anything other than this right now, which is mainly why I've been pushing so much content out on this right now, because it's freaking cold, guys. And this thing with all the new gear, the heated jacket, like I could roll in the 20s on this thing and I'm perfectly fine. So with that being said, let's get these things installed real quick. They're pretty freaking cool. The best part about them and the reason why I went with these instead of something else is the fact that they actually work with the adventure models lower bars that you that come with the bike as well as these upper bars that come with the bike so these completely install on their own without having to remove or replace or buy different bars so that the money we spent on this bike gets to go a little bit farther than just swapping out parts because that would totally suck so the first thing I'm going to do here is go after these little eight millimeters. We're going to take this skid plate off because I need to be able to see back here. So there are four eight millimeter bolts holding on this skid plate. There's a 10 millimeter nut on the back side. There we go. Make sure we save this little washer that comes with it. Here's our nut. There's one. This one in the back here does not have a nut. And we do have a nut on the back of this one. There we go. All right, so the next thing to go for is these brackets right here. They have a 12 millimeter bolt running all the way through and a 12 millimeter nut on the other side. There's one on the bottom here, one on the top. We need to take out both of these. And the kit actually come with replacement bolts for the addition of these engine guards. They're on there pretty good. There's our nut. There we go. These bolts are a little tight in here, and that's because it's holding both of these bars in. You might have to finagle a little bit, moving all this around, shaking each bar. And of course, sometimes you can get a little impatient as well. Sometimes things need a little extra effort. There we go. All right, our next step is to go after this four millimeter bolt right here, which is just holding on this little kind of plastic cover here. There is the little plastic washers, don't lose those. And this just pops straight off. And apparently so do these little rubber pieces. So we need to put those back in before we put this back on because that'll be a total pain in the ass and this won't go on right if we don't do this right here and put these rubber caps back in. This 12 mil right here, go ahead and spin it out. So here is our first bar that we're gonna install. Place this, I would assume, around. Yep, there we go. We got a weaseler in around, and it looks like we are swapping out four of the bolts. We get two of these that each have two washers. So we'll take one of these washers off. It's actually gonna go in between this, and this washer is gonna go into our bar like so. So one washer, two washer, and our replacement bolt will now go deep down in there. So the bolts that come with the kit are a 13 millimeter instead of a 12. So there we go. We want it nice and loose like that because we still need to fit all of this up. You know how hard it was getting these bolts out down here? We're gonna wanna be able to have some play. All right, moving over to the back side here, we have these two pieces of like plastic-ish kind of components. You'll see this is like cut ground out in a kind of weird way. And what that is gonna do is allow this piece to sit right next to this big weird weld that's on the frame. So we'll put that piece back there like that, slide the other piece around, and make sure that you don't get this uh, kickstand wire pinched up in any of this, because that would suck. So there we go, we got that there. We'll line the thing up, see if we can get a bolt in. Do this by hand first. That was pretty easy to get one threaded in. Here's the other one. And that one's threading in quite nicely too. So we're gonna leave them nice and floppy like that. All right, back over on this side, the next thing we're gonna go with is this plastic piece again. It is a four millimeter hex bolt that we need to take out. And remember, it has its own plastic washer, so let's not lose that. There we go. There's our plastic washer, and these just pop. Just pull them straight back and out. And once again, we lost our little internal rubber dammits. 
And if you leave them on this side, you will not get this back on right. You have to take them off and rework them back into the fairings. And remember, we are at 12 mil still. We will not be using that bolt. Roll this guy into place and then lift up. That guy's in there. So before we get that bolt on, we need to get this guy out. So we got six millimeter hex bolts up top here that we need to get out. Just the one, you can leave the other one in and we'll line these two up. Okay, so maybe to make this a little bit easier, we'll loosen this. Oh, there we go. Make sure you loosen that bolt first instead of trying to do what I was trying to do, which would have stripped out this bolt. We got that in there. That was a key piece. Make sure this was loose before you start trying to put that in. So back onto this side, we do have two washers. So we need to take one of these off, run it through like so. And we'll try and get her in. And of course, if you're having a hard time with it, annoying. Okay, so, so what I was struggling with here is, if you can see, there's obviously the fairing, and then there's this piece, and the bolt goes through this piece before it hits what it actually screws into. And this piece was actually moving up and to the left to me. So when I would go through all of these, I wasn't hitting where the bolt was supposed to go in. So by taking the screwdriver and pushing down on it, I would, with everything lined up, I was able to find the actual hole. And you could tell by taking the bolt out, looking in there, and moving this piece around, that that's what's going on. We'll make sure we have a few threads on here. We still have movement and everything. That's good. So it's time to move on. This right side is no longer down here by this, and that's probably because of this chunk of metal here. We don't have a funky cutout in this one. It'll still go right here behind. And it looks like we do have a bracket here for some kind of electrical, so be careful with that. Obviously, I haven't dropped the bike with these yet, so that will be a whole nother story, is to see if these damage the frame. That's something that really kind of worries me, to be honest with you, with having these crash bars, was do I want to ruin a frame or do I want to ruin fairings? All that's up to debate on what could ultimately happen, but I'm liking them so far. I think it's awesome that they fit with our stock, so we don't have much left to do here other than try and run those bolts through that we got with the kit, and then we can start tightening all this down. Now for the hard part. What we have here is this long bolt with two washers and a nut and these two additional spacers that are going to go in there as well. So for the first thing I'm going to do is take one of the washers and nuts off and I'm going to try and shove this first bolt in and then put one of the plastic washers behind. Now the top one is almost looking easier to do so I'm going to run that one for as well right now. In fact it probably would have been easier to run. No, there we go. Getting our little chip in there is going to be a total pain. I guess we probably should do the top first. You don't really have a choice because there's no way to put your this little black washer in there without it that I can see anyway. That is a total pain. They're definitely needed in there. But they are very difficult to put in there. So maybe a pair of needle nose pliers. There we go. Ah, that's nice. That lines up. All right, needle nose are the way to go. Oh, ha! Do them both at the same time and wiggle. Yes, fudge yeah. That was totally it. That's the ticket. So I'm gonna put this spacer in here. You want to get this top one in first. What I found is the needle nose are probably the easiest way to do it. There we go. Yeah, this is almost a two-person job right here. Ooh, I got her to go in a little bit. If you're going to do the tapping, be very careful. You'll just ruin all the threads, which would obviously suck. Ha! Did that work? Yeah, goddamn right it did. Look at that. Holy effing frustration. Nice. Wow, am I getting lucky. There we go. Not the most enjoyable job you're going to do. Definitely recommend this job with the motorcycle cold. This exhaust would suck. It would be hot as hell. Those are going on pretty good. 
these are what I'm going to use as the first pieces to tighten. So the bolts that we ran through, they are six millimeter and a 13 inch in the back. So there we go. Get the other one up top here. There we go. And of course, like everything, make sure there is thread locker on all of this. Some kind of blue 242. Put on everything except for, really these are lock washers, so they should be good without any Loctite, but every other bolt needs Loctite on it. So these are up here, are five mils. Go ahead and run them down. There we go. Those are good, these are good. Get to the other side. We'll tighten these two down. And of course, try and make the gaps the same on both sides if you can. Bounce back and forth between the two. And these are our six mil. We'll go ahead and run them down. Still got these guys up here. We'll run them in. And then we should be able to just pop our little covers back on pretty easily. Ah, there we go. Put our little four millimeter back in here. Make sure you still got that washer. And get this guy tightened down. All right, a little plastic shield back on. Little four millimeter bolt. Last thing to do, we'll obviously put our skid plate back on. I think that's gonna be the hardest thing is getting our nut back on. <laughs> there we go. So there's one nut. Of course, like putting these bars on, we will leave this loose. That is a locking nut, which is cool. There's the bottom one. Then the two on the other side. And be careful not to lose the extra little spacers that is inside. This is a much tighter fit with the new bars, but it does work. There we go. Last and final. All right, now job's done. I'd say obviously the hardest part was these two bolts down here at the bottom, trying to get them to run all the way through. Uh, I did use a you know long device and a little hammer to kind of pound a little bit, but I did spend a lot of time coming to the other side and lining everything up as, as, much, as best as I possibly could before I gave it light little taps to kind of get it through. So that's probably gonna be the hardest part you deal with in this job, which annoying, yeah, but it's, it's not that bad. You'll get it done. So, so far I like them. Obviously, I'll follow up with you guys because we know we're going to drop this motorcycle. So when I finally do drop it, I will let you know if we're doing any damage and how these things handle it. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week.